Hey, listen, let's get to Thursday Night Football where the Buffalo Bills dismantled the Miami Dolphins 31-10. to Total blowout. They dominated from start to finish. But the real stir story here is Tua had another concussion uh, left in the third quarter after this hit right here. So the reaction to your guys' the reaction to uh, Tua and, and leaving the game and having another concussion at this yeah, point Yeah, look, it, it sucks. Obviously, on the human level, it sucks. Uh, and because we've seen him as a young man suffer these concussions before, uh, you do have to separate the reality of him being a human being who's probably not going to play again this year. I'd be shocked if you see him back on the field this year. We could worry about, you know, next year, next year. Uh, but you have to separate that from the football. I know it's hard to do because we watched it happen. It's only eight hours ago, whatever it is, that it took place, you know, and I say to myself watching the replay over and over again, you would think that someone along the way, because of the previous concussions, were like, dude, you got the first down slide. He's a football you know? player. And that's the, that's the reality. Thank you for saying that. It doesn't matter how much you beat into a guy's head about playing safe. When you're on the field and your competitive juices are flowing and you're down by three touchdowns in the second half at home, you're trying to make a play and you're not thinking be safe. And unfortunately, his not thinking about his own safety led to what I still think is a bit of a fluky concussion in that it was this massive hit. You know, across the middle where a wide receiver is exposed and a safety comes up and drills him. He basically made contact with DeMar Hamlin's bicep and maybe part of his chest. And then, of course, his head snaps down and hits the ground. And, you know, seeing his arm stiff and rigid like that, his fingers, which we've all now since learned after a couple years ago, is an indication of severe brain trauma. Your know, thoughts and prayers certainly go out to him. And then you do have to address the football part of it. The Bills dominated them. He was playing like crap prior to the concussion. And dare I say it, but I'm going to say it, Miami season ended last night. It's over. Yeah, I mean, the football side of it, just to address that, Craig, I mean, you would think the Falcons go out and they have a guy who's 35 and he's coming off of an Achilles injury and they use a top 10 pick on Michael Penix, right? a, a big-time insurance policy. Sure. The Jets, right, they go out and get a 40-year-old quarterback. Obviously, he gets hurt last year. He got no backup. This year, you go out and you Ty bring Rod in Taylor. Tyrod Taylor. Right. And the Dolphins have Skylar Thompson backing up Tua. So that's not much of an insurance policy on Tua. And so that's the football side in the Dolphins season. It's hard to watch. It's, it's sad. It's scary. And DeMar Hamlin colliding with Tua and those two guys meeting on the field literally and then the figurative impact of what we've seen them go through, you know, it's obviously a reminder, if any of us needed it, of the danger. But the thing is, too, we are now educated on all of this. We know about chronic traumatic encephalopathy. We know about Dave Duerson and Junior Seau. Sure. And we know the risks and the players know the risks. And there is a return to play protocol. And hopefully everyone is safe and conservative and all this, but I fully expect Tua to want to continue playing oh, football. I think he'll want to. Yeah, I don't, and we're not seeing him this year, though. I, I don't think so. I don't think so, but we saw those concussions two years ago happen in very right. successive periods of time. So I don't think we can put ourselves, I would do this, I would retire, that, I would right. give up the money. It will ultimately be up to the doctors and Tua and Stink, you can speak to this. Football players want to play football. I fully expect Tua to try to come back from this. I do as well. I think he'll come back, and I, I wouldn't doubt that he comes back this year. I, I expect to see him play again. He's a young player. Yes, he's had the head trauma. Yes, he's had the issues. But Tua is a football player, and that's what football players want to do. They want to go out there and play. And, of course, if the doctors and the experts say, hey, man, this is not good, we're not going to allow you to come back, you know, I would understand that. But for Tua, I just would assume that he wants to finish this season, that he wants to play this season. He wants to finish his career. He wants to continue because this is what he's done since the time, uh, you know, of his Mark, childhood. Mark, can I jump and in on that and I ask think, you a question? I'm sorry. And yeah, I apologize please. for interrupting, all right? But I have to ask no. you a question. Um, we all respect what you're saying. I get it. You know, I've covered NFL teams and traveled with them. You've covered the Bears for a long time. So we know maybe a little bit more of the inside workings than an average fan might, but not nearly as much as you. I totally get the mindset of a football player. I have a son who's a football player. I get it. I live with him in my home, right? So there's no doubt mm -hmm. in my mind, too, is going to want to play. But at some point, and I don't want to be on a soapbox on this, if you care about the person, 
and he's got a concussion history. Doesn't somebody with the Dolphins have to say, you're not playing again this year? As much as that might hurt our chances of winning a Super Bowl, we're not letting you play this year. Doesn't somebody have to not be the adult in the room? Well, the, I, think the, I think the medical staff has to be the adult in the room, yes. There's no question about that. But the bottom line is if you get cleared to play at some point, let's call it five weeks from now or six weeks from now, and Tua and his family say, yes, that's what we want to do. I want to play. That's where, you know, that's what I've done my whole life. I mean, I think about my own career. Um, you know, the only thing I ever wanted to be from the time I was 12 was a football player. And you're willing to put yourself in harm's way to make that come become a reality. Like, that was my childhood dream, and I got to live out that childhood dream. Now it came with a lot of issues. It came with a lot of injuries. It came with a lot of problems. But the bottom line is I would do it all over again without equivocation. Like, I would not even hesitate. I had 20 knee surgeries, I had back surgery, I had seven elbow surgeries, I had a kidney surgery during the course of my career. It's 29 surgeries, and I wouldn't even think twice about it if I had another opportunity to do it again. So that's the, the mentality of a football player that, you know, this is what his whole life has been. This is what he has always wanted to do. So at some point, you know, at some point, he's going to try to trump the medical staff. Now, the medical staff has to be to have the final say. But if at some point they say, yeah, you can come back to play, then what are you going to do as an organization? Yeah, well, you do the right are thing for the guy. Are you as an organization going to say, no, you can't. Yeah. We're not going to allow it. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I compare a lot of things to movies. I know I probably shouldn't. But Rocky Balboa should have thrown the white towel in to save Apollo Creed's life. And he didn't. And the Miami Dolphins should throw the white towel in to save Tua's life, and they won't because of what you just said. Well, and, I, I would, uh, it, I would just ask me. you, hey, Craig, let me interrupt you really quick. We've seen, we have seen, like, guys like Troy Aikman that suffered a lot of concussions who happens to be, you know, doing exceptionally well sure. right now. Every guy's a little bit different. And I think one of the things, the equations that really bothers me as a football player is people will say, hey, football, concussion, you know, and then lifelong issues afterwards. But we've seen plenty of guys that have succeeded, that have done really well after football. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I don't think we really put in, you know, into kind of the equation, at least for me, is, you know, the, the ability for your brain, right, to circumvent some of the damage you've done to it, just like your body has that healing capacity, right. the plasticity of your brain and the connectivity of your brain to overcome those things. I, I totally get it. Uh, and now you do have to transition from that, I think, to football and what happened last night because prior to the injury and the concussion, as we were saying, like, I picked this game completely wrong. I thought Miami would hold on to home turf and uh, let the Bills know it's no longer your division. You're not just going to you know, beat us because Josh Allen showed up. And I was doing a little research on this. And this, you know, for all the great talk about Mike McDaniel, you know, the wonder kind kid, right? He, oh, the offensive genius and all the things that we all collectively think about Mike McDaniel as a head coach. If you go back to the end of the 2021 season, so I've got two full seasons, basically, of data here. He's the worst head coach in football against winning teams. They're 1-11 in their last 12 games against winning teams. They average a, a pedestrian for them, 17 points a game. And defensively, they don't show up for the big moment. They give up more than 30 points a game. The only game they have ever won in the last two-plus years against winning teams was the win against the Dallas Cowboys a year ago. Outside of that, they beat up on lesser teams and cannot stay competitive with really good teams. I mean, listen, that's the reality on the football side of it is the quarterback who helped them lead the AFC in scoring now has a significant injury, and they lost a game in a division now where Buffalo's 2-0. and You still think the Jets are going to be very good? Yep. The Dolphins season, this, we talk about it all the time. Injuries are a huge part. It's not who you play, but when you play them, who has the health situation for the year. The Dolphins, obviously, their season changed last night. Their season ended last night. I'll say it. I'm sorry, yeah. Dolphins fans. I, it's, I don't, hey, it's over. Right. I don't, I don't disagree with you. The other thing is, you know, we, we make so much out of periphery players, receivers, and running backs and speed. They have all that stuff. But they got dominated in the trenches last night, and that's what cost them that game because Tua was on his back for the majority of that game, and they got after him. Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.